Energy and Trade in Investment will now commence. For those of you who are joining us via the e-conferencing platform Kudo, please be reminded that you will be able to turn on your microphone and camera only when your request to speak has been submitted and accepted through the platform. We also welcome participants joining us via YouTube. Thank you for your attention. I also want to inform you, as informed yesterday, that today's session will be chaired by the Vice Chair, His Excellency Mr. Rahmat Boudiman, Ambassador Extraordinary and Plenipotentiary and Permanent Representative to ESCAP, the Republic of Indonesia. Thank you very much. Excellencies, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, since I speak for the first time, I wish to thank the delegations for elect my elections as vice chair. We shall now take up the agenda item 4A, work of the Secretariat and associate results and priorities pertaining to trade and investment under the sub-programs on trade investment and innovations. For this item, you should have before you document SCAP slash CTI slash 2021 slash 3, and information documents SCAP slash CTI slash 2021 slash INF slash 1 and SCAP slash CTI slash 2021 slash INF and slash 2 on the outcomes of the Asia Pacific Business Forum 2019 and 2020, respectively. I kindly request Ms. Maya Mikic, Director Trade Investment and Innovation Division, SCAP to introduce the agenda item. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Good morning uh, to all the delegates. It is my pleasure to present uh, this document. May I have the next slide, please? So, um, uh, the objective of the subprogram 2 that is uh, uh, titled a subprogram on trade, investment, and innovation is its objective is to assist member states in harnessing trade, investment, innovation, technology and enterprise development for sustainable development and regional cooperation for shared prosperity. However, given that uh, our work under science, technology and innovation is reported in a separate committee, Committee on ICT and SDI, this committee focuses on reporting our activities uh, and the results and impact under the focus of trade and investment. Uh, in that work uh, and the period uh, to which we will refer in, uh, in this presentation as well as it was referred in the documents is since the last committee in 2019. In, in that work we have, um, we have uh, rested on uh, three modalities uh, in general. Uh, one is providing research and analytical tools for evidence-based policy making. Um, second, providing technical assistance, advisory and capacity building. And third, convening the regional, region's governments and other stakeholders to enable regional cooperation, dialogue and networking. In all of this, the, uh, the two important uh, elements were mainstreaming of gender equality and sustainability principles. In our work in, the, in this reporting period, there were two factors that played a very important role in how we did uh, our work and deliverables and uh, how we uh, had to reorient our, uh, some of the areas of our work. Those two are uh, realization of the serious uh, insufficient progress in delivery of sustainable development goals across the region and across all of the 17 sustainable development goals. And another factor is uh, the onset of the global pandemic in the early of to, uh, 2020, uh, which uh, required um, repurposing of our funding and resources, as well as reordering of some of the priorities in terms of uh, our uh, delivery of the sub-program. However, I am um, I'm very pleased to report that uh, we not only delivered the sub-program as it was um, accepted and uh, agreed by the member states, uh, but we also added to it uh, um, 
innumerable uh, activities and knowledge products that I will refer to in the rest of um, our, my presentation. Next slide, please. So in terms of the research and analysis for evidence-based policy making, um, I think, again, uh, I would focus on uh, reporting on uh, different aspects through that uh, pillar of, of work. We have engaged in development of um, new uh, evidence-based uh, evidence uh, knowledge products uh, that uh, are combined in, in um, reports, in policy, policy briefs and other applied research uh, uh, outputs that uh, definitely have been used across the region in, by different stakeholders in the, in the way how they also advised and, um, and work with their, with their governments. Uh, I think in terms of uh, enumerating examples from that area, um, we definitely need to mention the flagship of Asia-Pacific Trade and Investment Report that in 2019 was done in collaboration with UNCTAD, um, and it focused on one very important area uh, in trade policy uh, environment uh, regionally and globally, which is the rise uh, of non-tariff uh, measures. Uh, we also provided uh, a series of new uh, data sets or updated data sets uh, that, uh, that uh, are made available free, uh, freely uh, to, uh, to interested uh, parties uh, through the knowledge networks like uh, Artnet and in particular the ESCAP and World Bank trade, data cause, uh, trade cause database has been um, used not only by the Secretariat but by many international agencies and uh, national, uh, national research uh, entities in providing better support when it comes to uh, formulating and designing uh, trade facilitation policies and wider trade policy approach as well as in support of the of uh, WTO TFA trade facilitation agreement implementation by by many countries we have started new work uh, in applied and analytical area in terms of measuring uh, better measuring integration in the region uh, by adding the components of digital economy to the traditionally uh, available measures that uh, focus focus only on the flows of trade, um, investment, um, and other uh, more traditionally uh, known aspects of international integration. Uh, all of that work has been demand-oriented uh, in the sense that we, uh, we have been consulting with the national uh, governments, uh, uh, entities involved in research and development or in policy making, asking uh, for uh, very specific inputs into their policy uh, making or, or in, uh, as it will be seen in advisory. Now, in, when it comes to reorientation uh, to respond to the demands uh, uh, that, were, um, that uh, arose from the onset of the pandemic, uh, we provided a number of, number of um, support uh, products uh, and activities to the countries. Um, most recently, we issued the Asia-Pacific Trade Facilitation Report. Uh, we started the initiative, uh, which now turned into the global one, uh, in terms of um, understanding better what type of provisions in terms of trade policy can be put in place to manage better the situations of crisis like the pandemics or uh, what it will be through the climate climate. Uh, chain, uh, change. Uh, we have um, provided the analysis and support in terms of understanding how the reshaping of supply chain uh, or global value chains um, will, uh, will be uh, evolving in terms of seeking uh, stronger resilience uh, in the economies of the region. And then most recently also in the, in the, at the end of the 2020, we have provided four um, reports um, 
uh, helping countries understand how the trade flows in merchandise uh, uh, trade, services trade, uh, investment flows, and uh, evolution of preferential trade agreements um, evolved uh, uh, throughout the, the crisis last year. We also very early in the uh, in the uh, onset of the crisis, we provided the monitoring mechanisms in terms of trade policy uh, actions and reactions of the countries, uh, in, and uh, that uh, monitor is still available on our website. Uh, um, I'm not going to dwell more on listing all of these activities because we have provided the list of events and uh, the products on the on our website. So, if I may have next uh, next page. In terms of technical assistance and capacity building. Um, all of the knowledge products that I have just talked about have been uh, very uh, instrumental in designing and delivering our capacity building and advisory. And so um, it, it is a very uh, good synergy that we have between these two areas of work because they support each other and we better understand while providing capacity building and advisory what uh, further research is needed, and also our research is is actually providing better advisory. So um, it is a very uh, a virtuous cycle between these two pillars, and uh, we will continue working in that in that mode. In 2020, we adopted, uh, of course, virtual modality in delivering our capacity building uh, and advisory and we provided uh, numerous um, numerous uh, sort of uh, webinars and and meetings uh, through through that uh, modality using all the available platforms um, that related to very concrete assistance on trade and investment negotiations uh, implementation of uh, policy and understanding of, poli uh, of, of policy changes in a, in a global context and the reforms of the WTO, uh, as well as helping countries understand the uh, implications of non-tariff measures. Um, in terms of uh, work in our project that deals with women entrepreneurship, um, and empowering women through uh, uh, strengthening uh, women entre entrepreneurship uh, through through fintech, uh, there were a number of um, of uh, activities and um, and. Uh, uh, concrete uh, mechanisms um, issued last year with our partners that went into uh, uh, really um, reaching the impact of that project uh, uh, beyond the expectations of the of the crisis year. So I think uh, the, the the number of women that were reached through our activities is over seven seven thousand um, in 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 total. Uh, in FDI policy, we have issued new, re new research that is uh, quite unique and uh, helps understanding better the consequences uh, of uh, outward uh, foreign direct investment, and uh, that directly feeds into uh, the, the capacity building as well. The training activities that uh, were uh, that took place through the virtual uh, platforms um, are also available. Uh, online, so they can be uh, they can be uh, re, uh, reused and, uh, if need be, retailed for the specific uh, requests um, from um, from any of the on the member member states. Uh, I think uh, in in this week we have also uh, put in place several demonstration uh, sessions through which some of these um, some of these tools were. Uh, were explained to the to the participants on the course. Next slide, please. In terms of the convening uh, of the region's governments and uh, other stakeholders to enable regional cooperation, dialogue, and networking, let me mention two specific uh, instruments that the Secretariat is um, 
working with the member states uh, in, in to, to, to strengthen regional cooperation. One is uh, a framework agreement on facilitation and cross-border paperless trade in Asia and the Pacific. We have already heard from the deliberations yesterday that um, the, uh, the treaty will uh, be entered into force in uh, February this this year, and uh, we are very uh, pleased with the with the support of uh, various uh, member member states in terms of um, you know, reporting readiness uh, for their accession to the treaty as well as uh, uh, fastened implementation of the treaty once it is put, put in force. The other instrument is Asia-Pacific Trade Agreement, um, which uh, last year uh, 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 gained a new member, uh, Mongolia, and now it has seven seven members in the region, including um, including uh, some very large uh, trading uh, trading economies. For both of these instruments, I would like to point to the availability of very informative video materials and other um, and other uh, capacity building materials online. So uh, I invite. Uh, uh, all to actually uh, look at these materials and get informed. Um, knowledge and practice networks were also expanded, and, and of course, ArtNet, uh, as the network of the think tanks and research institutes, uh, gained new membership, produced uh, further work, and uh, held a uh, number of webinars, while UNXT helped in the preparation and work of the trade facilitation and digital, digital trade. ESCAP Sustainable Business Network also met in several occasions through its uh, executive council as well as uh, APBF and uh, Asia Pacific Business uh, Business Forum, and also helped the Secretariat in understanding better the uh, the partnership uh, between the 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 business sector and um, and uh, the Secretariat and the member member countries. Um, may I have um, another slide, please? So uh, just to a little bit of looking forward, uh, what uh, is being uh, now in progress uh, is the preparation of the handbook on model provisions for trade in times of crisis in regional trade agreements. Um, the new data sets uh, from the ESCAP and OECD work uh, related to the digital uh, trade regulatory integration, helping our countries to embark to the digital economy and uh, industrial revolution for um, modalities of work, Asia Pacific Trade and Investment Report 21 that will focus on accelerating climate smart trade and investment in collaboration with UNEP and UNCTAD and of course the handbook on policies promotion and facilitation of foreign direct investment for sustainable development in Asia Pacific uh, which will uh, come in the second and uh, updated revision together with the policy guidebook for SME development and um, in the Asia Pacific. Uh, next slide, please. So, uh, in terms of the and the next uh, issues for the considerations and recommendation uh, for this committee uh, to uh, to put forward to the commission, uh, the secretariat uh, has took the liberty to summarize the points from the document that was uh, submitted, and I'm just going to read these these points for. Um, for the reference, uh, to promote the development of digital trade and the digitization of trade procedures such as paperless trade and e-commerce. Second, to promote regional trade and investment cooperation and integration and its role in achieving the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development, including through Asia-Pacific Trade Agreement. Third, respond to the trade, investment, and innovation policy needs of member states in managing post-COVID-19 recovery, including enhancing capacity to avoid trade disruptions in times of crisis by devising model provisions for regional trade and cooperation agreements. Next slide, please. Uh, Fourth, promote policies and strategies for facilitating FDI with increased attention paid to the role of outward and intra-regional FDI in advancing sustainable development. Fifth, promote policies for SME development and resilience with a focus on advancing women's entrepreneurship. Sixth, 
promote multi-stakeholder and business engagement through established networks such as ESCAP Sustainable Business Network, Asia Pacific Business Forum, the UN Network of Experts on Paperless Trade, and Asia Pacific Training and Research Network on Trade. And seventh, promote sustainable business practices and innovative business approaches that contribute to sustainability, including the adoption of related principles and standards, such those contained in the United Nations Global Compact. I believe, um, uh, Mr. Chair, this ends my presentation. I leave you with, um, with a, a visual that describes our journey through 20 uh, work, and uh, I hope uh, um, the member states uh, will um, have use of that, uh, that visual as well. Thank you very much. I thank Ms. Mikic for her introductory remarks and presentations. Given a compressed schedule for this meeting, we ask for your support to tailor your intervention mainly to issues for discussion or action only, and to keep your intervention to no more than three minutes. To maintain order and for delegation to be ready to take the floor, when I call on the speaker, I will also announce the delegations next in line. The floor is now open for comments. Is there any delegates to want to take the floor? Yes. I should like to invite the distinguished delegate from Bangladesh to take the floor and to be followed by Indonesian, Indonesia delegation. Good morning, Mr. Chair. Am I audible? Okay. Oh, yeah. Yes, please uh, go ahead. Okay, thank you. Uh, on behalf of Bangladesh, uh, we'd like to thank UNSCAP, especially uh, Trade Investment and Innovation Division, for the spectacular actions uh, it has undertaken. Despite the challenging uh, time of COVID, Trade Investment and Innovation Div Division undertook commendable uh, initiatives. As Bangladesh is in the process of LDC graduation, we have taken initiative to negotiate PTS, FTS in, the, in anticipation of losing some trade preferences after LDC graduation. The country has all, uh, already signed a bilateral uh, PTA, preferential trade agreement with Bhutan. Bangladesh thanks UNSCAP for developing uh, trade intelligence and a negotiation advisor a tool for feasibility study of free and comprehensive economic partnership agreement. Uh, COVID-19 pandemic has uh, pushed us to underscore the necessity of digitization of trade, ha trade harmonization, uh, harmonization of customs procedure, especially exchange and acceptance of uh, electronic certificates. Bangladesh played a supportive role in facilitating trade and transit during COVID-19. Uh, pandemic in South Asia region and outside the region. Bangladesh has already ratified UNSCAP initiative of cross-border paperless trade. We acknowledge the contribution of UNSCAP for the technical and advisory support it extended to Bangladesh uh, in such endeavor of digitization of cross-border paperless trade. As we are going to uh, uh, operationalize cross-border paperless trade, we would expect a SCAP support uh, that support will continue in, in the days ahead. Uh, I remember I, I attended uh, a, uh, a meeting, uh, a regional conference at Space Cap, and uh, in that meeting, um, before the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, it was to set a stance for uh, before the MC12, which was scheduled to be held in Nur Sultan, Abadja Biden. In the consultation, there were some suggestions and uh, concrete decisions uh, which uh, were published later on with regard to securing the interest of LDCs and graduating LDCs in the backdrop of present crisis and weighing confidence in the multilateral trading system. SCAP may think of arranging or uh, convening a similar consultation 
even through a virtual platform, the Secretariat may think of or mumming on this. Bangladesh will uh, support, uh, will seek support and uh, from and through UNSCAP for fulfilling the commitment uh, the LDCs have made uh, in category C of the WTO framework uh, facil trade facilitation agreement. Uh, Bangladesh will uh, always remain uh, supportive in UNSCAP's action in trade, investment, and innovation as usual. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Madam Miyamoto, for your uh, good and very comprehensive uh, presentation. Thank you all. Thank you, dear colleagues. Indonesia. Hello. Yes, please. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Good morning, uh, distinguished delegates of SCAP member countries. Uh, and I would like to first thank uh, Madam Mikic for the excellent and pres uh, comprehensive presentation. Uh, we learned that the Asia Pacific Trade and Investment Report 2021 will be focused on the uh, climate smart trade and investment. Uh, we would like to share uh, common concerns about the report. Across the Asia Pacific region, connectivity has become the significant cost uh, social economic opportunities by upgrading infrastructure to support resilient economic development. It has been central to Asia's uh, dramatic growth in recent decades. But despite impressive advances, greater investment is needed. The World Bank estimates that emerging Asia Pacific countries alone need to invest 26 trillion US dollars from 2016 to 2030, or 1.7 trillion US dollars a year to maintain its current rate of economic growth. To answer, the uh, to answer, the cha answer the cha the, this challenge, the Indonesian government launched numerous public works projects across the country. This initiative has dual objectives. First, to upgrade ailing infrastructures, and second, to create jobs during the COVID-19 pandemic. However, government's ever lot is not enough to meet the gigantic infrastructure development demands. The Asia Development Bank estimates that 60% of the investment needed in emerging Asia Pacific before 2030 will have to come from the private sector. While banks are important players in infrastructure the investment, they are also unable to fill infrastructure gap. Hence, the need to tap private uh, resources through public-private partnership or PPPs, mainly in energy and food security, uh, railroad uh, are uh, needed, also needed in this uh, regard. Uh, to support the private sector and facilitate the development of MSMEs and business startups, the Indonesian government has initiated PPP approach in facilitating smaller companies with several major companies and unicorns such as Gojek and uh, Tokopedia. Such association can help larger companies assimilate their brands, technical tools, and products into an ecosystem. On the other hand, this cooperation allows MSMEs to plug into a broader network of supply chains and ecosystem. Indonesia strongly believes that supply chains can play an influential role in decarbonization. Uh, in this case, a good example is the electric car value chain. Moreover, this initiative will have a tremendous impact in if Asia Pacific countries could cooperate hand in hand with other countries like China, uh, which pledges to achieve a CO2 emission peak before 2020 and carbon neutrality before 2060. In this regard, we encourage the Secretary to also move forward to respond to sh the, the shifting priorities of member uh, states in the area of trade and uh, investment which include unlocking digital trade potential, sustainable intergovernment, uh, interregional trade and value change, and uh, as well as uh, principles of uh, for investment policymaking. 
And also on this equation, we also comment, uh, want to comment the analytical tools, uh, trade intelligence and negotiation advisors or TINA developed by uh, UNSCAP. Uh, the existence of the TINA platform will be useful uh, to improve preparation for the implementation of trade negotiations. The TINA platform uh, will save time and increase the productivity of the negotiating team while enabling deep, uh, deeper uh, data analysis so that the negotiation can be more effective. And lastly, uh, uh, Mr. Chair, I wish to uh, reiterate that Indonesia stands ready to contribute to the regional collaborative uh, efforts to develop stronger foundation of the recovery of international trade and investment. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much, the distinguished delegate from Bangladesh and Indonesia. Now, I recognize the delegate from China. Would I now invite the distinguished delegate from China to take the floor?谢谢主席尊敬的各位代表仍然取得积极进展蒙古国正式加入了亚太贸易协定亚太无止贸易便利化框架协定即将生效的这些重要成果为促进亚太区域经济一体化和疫后经济复苏注入了新动力我们对秘书处的卓有成效的工作表示
I now kindly request Ms. Isabella Heng, Chief Program Planning and Budget Section Strategy and Program Management Division of SCAP, to make presentations. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, in this presentation, I will quickly walk you through terms of reference of the Trade and Investment Committee, including the issues to be mainstream, the trade and investment related results in ESCA program plans for 2020, 2021, and the draft result for 2022, and selected contributions to cross-cutting areas in the context of trade and investment. The three areas under substantive purview of the Committee on Trade and Investment are shown in the slide. Within these respective areas of purview, the Committee shall review and analyze regional trends, identify in consultation with member states their priorities and emerging issues, and consult on regional approaches, taking into consideration sub-regional aspects. Promote regional dialogue, including sub-regional synergies and exchange of experience on policies and programs. Consider common regional position as input to global processes and promote regional follow-up to the, their outcomes. Propose issues for consideration by the Commission as the basis for possible resolution. Monitor the implementation of Commission resolutions promote a collaborative approach to addressing the development challenges of the region where appropriate between governments and civil society, the private sector, as well as the United Nations and other international organizations at the regional and sub-regional level. Next slide, please. In addition to the sectoral issues of priority specified in the terms of reference, each committee also considers the sustainable development goals that are relevant to its work, ensure that its work contributes to poverty reduction and balanced integration of the three pillars of sustainable development, gender equality, and the priority needs of countries in special situation. These issues were determined by the Commission on the Conference Structure. Next slide, please. In the draft 2022 program plan, each subprogram present four results. Result one and two refer to 2020 performance and plan result. They are respectively improve access to innovative trade policy support in response to the pandemic and other crisis, and harnessing innovative business models for social progress. Result three is the 2021 planned result, which is harnessing innovative technologies to enhance women's access to financial services. And result four is the 2022 planned result, making trade processes more efficient, transparent, and safer through paperless and contactless trade. Next slide, please. Further to the snapshot of the work directly contributing to the sectoral areas, the sub-programs also contributed work in the cross-cutting areas to be mainstream in all committees. They are South-South Cooperation for STI Policies in the Asia-Pacific region. The project focuses on developing measurement frameworks and supporting the development and implementation of strategy and policy measures in core business model innovation, namely impact investment and social enterprise catalyzing women's entrepreneurship. ESCAP, with the support of the Government of Canada, is implementing five-year project called Catalyzing Women's Entrepreneurship. Next slide, please. We are now in the process of fine-tuning our draft proposed program plan for 2022. The proposed program plan for 2022 has recently been submitted to ACPR for inputs. In this opportunity, I would like to update you the estimated date shown in the slide. The proposed program plan will be submitted to the Commission at its 77th session in April 2021. It will then be submitted to CPC and ACAVQ around June to August 2021. 
And finally, it is to be considered by the fifth committee and the GA at its 76th session around October to December 2021. Thank you, and I'm happy to take any question you may have. I thank Ms. Heng for her presentation. The floor is now open for comments. To maintain order and for delegations to be ready to take the floor, when I call on the speaker, I will also announce the delegation next in line. Now I should like to invite distinguished members to make any comment. As I see there are no more or no delegates who wish to take the floor, does the committee wish to make a specific decisions or recommendations on any topic under this agenda item? Thank you. With this, we conclude the discussion on agenda item 4B. I would now like to process to agenda item 5, other matters. This agenda affords the distinguished delegates to the opportunity to discuss or put forward any other matters that we will not cover, cover in the agenda. At the same time, it is also provides the Secretariat with the opportunity to, to bring any other matters to the attention of the committee. The floor is now open for common, if any. I see no comment from member countries. So I would like to invite the Secretariat to bring any other matters to attention of the committee. At the same time, the Secretariat may wish to provide the meeting with some information concerning the draft report. Ms. Mikic, please take the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, Mr. Chair, Excellencies, Distinguished Delegates, Ladies and Gentlemen, it is my pleasure to inform you that the draft report is expected to be ready for your perusal at noon tomorrow. Copies of the report will be made available at the committee website, and I hope uh, the, the, uh, the address, the link to the website is shown on your screen. Um, I can read it, but it wouldn't be a very nice reading, so uh, hopefully, the, yes, we see it on the screen, and please then go under the agenda, agenda item six, uh, that, uh, that is the place where you will find the, the draft report tomorrow at noon. The consideration of the draft report will take place from 1.30 to 4 p.m. Bank of Time. Kindly note the link to access the meeting through CUDO tomorrow will be the same as today. However, the link for YouTube will change and is on the committee website. Delegates who join with, uh, via CUDA are welcome to join 30 minutes before the session starts for connection testing. I would also like to inform the participants uh, who uh, are available to join us tomorrow morning uh, as there will be an ARTNET lecture series talk given by ARTNET Permanent Research Advisor Professor Alan Dirdorf of the University of Michigan on the topic of trade and trade policy during the pandemic. The talk will start at 10 a.m. and will be um, running until 11.15. Information, connection details, and registration are available on the Trade and Investment website on the ESCAP website on the screen. With this, I wish you a great afternoon and see you tomorrow. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Ms. Mikic. With that, we shall adjourn for today, and we meet back here at 1.30 p.m. tomorrow afternoon for the adoption of the report. I thank you. <laughs>